capital raise, oh, this is an exciting one, all right? So I'm not here to take your money for an investment. I'm here to take your money and I may or may not give you something in return. Wow, that's even better for me taking your money. Yes. Okay, what does that mean? It means the following. First of all, let's just check where we are on the World Economic Forum framework. We are at about five o'clock. We're at the five o'clock section. Can you see that? Capital raising. And what's the biggest circle there? You got it. It's crowdfunding. Wow. All right. So where did crowdfunding start? It started with the crowdfunding of films, but it morphed into capital raising for equity. Kickstarter and Indiegogo are two of the prized brand names in this area. If you ask anyone to give you a crowdfunding example, these two names will jump out very, very quickly. Who are they? Well, Kickstarter and Indiegogo are basically reward-based crowdfunders. What does that mean? Okay, it's like I've got this new product. This, I use it to comb my hair. It's brand new. Maybe there's technology inside it. And so as it's combing, it actually, what does it do? It, it massages my scalp. I've got a product. I put it online and I say, I'm going to sell this product. I'm going to deliver this to you within three months. If you pay me today $9.99 US dollars, I promise to deliver this to you in three months. And I haven't even built it. I've just got the prototype. And that's what Kickstarter and Indiegogo are about. I've got this product promise to give to you, but first you give me the money and then I'll deliver it to you when I have built the product. Wow, can they do that? Yes, they can. And that's, it really works. So that's what we mean by the crowdfunding for reward. So the reward is a product or, or it is a service. There are other bases of crowdfunding. If you look to the middle middle column and that is crowdfunding for debt and that is you give me the money and I will give you interest on funds. Wow, can I do that? Yes, startups are doing that today. And then final type of crowdfunding is equity ownership. You give me the money, I will give you a share of the pie. What is that pie? Well, maybe that pie will be bigger in the future, maybe it may not. Well, that's the risk you need to factor in. But startups have raised a lot of money using this form of crowdfunding. They are the three types of major crowdfunding models in business today. Wow, how big are they? If you look at this, the largest players in the crowdfunding landscape are the rewards-based crowdfunders. And as you, as you can see, Indiegogo and Kickstarter are the big, what we say, the gorillas, ooh, 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 big gorillas in this area. And there are big crowdfunders in the equity space. We've got Upstart, Circle Up, Crowdfunder, Refunder, and then you've got the donation on your bottom left hand side, and you've got the lending on the bottom right hand side. So Obviously, there's the different types of crowdfunding going on, and you need to be aware of this as a business model for capital raising. Okay, what are some of the examples of crowdfunded products, especially in the rewards area? Let's have a look, shall we? The top 10 crowdfunded businesses are the Pebble Smartwatch. What's that? Well, that's a smartwatch like this. And basically, they promise to deliver this in several months, but you pay them the money first. They raised 10, over $10 million on the first smartwatch. Of course, on their second smartwatch, they went broke on that first one, It, by the way because they couldn't get the factories to make the smartwatch and they had trouble with supply and things like that. You know, all, the, all these sorts of things happen after you give them the money. But they raised that much again, plus more, on their second smartwatch. They've been since bought out by Fitbit, and Fitbit has now been bought out by another big company. They keep on buying each other out. It's, it's the game over there somewhere. All right, and so there's other products that have also been 
on Kickstarter and Indiegogo and Fundable and like a Form 1 3D printer, 2.9 million, Oculus Rift 2.4 million, which is a 3D virtual reality headset, you know, and there's all the products and they have been funded by Kickstarter, Fundable, Indiegogo. Some examples of the top 10 crowdfunded businesses. What about the top 20 most funded Kickstarter projects of all time? Well, here we have Pebble Time. That was their first smartwatch. Of course, they raised more, it's 2019. Then the Pebble 2, they raised 12.8 million. And there's several other major products that raised a sizable amount of money, over $10 million. So that's by 2019, as you can see. This is not getting smaller. This business of crowdfunding is just getting larger and larger and larger. All right, let's move to another type of way of getting your money. I want your money. Give me your money. Give me your money. And you're going to say, I'll give you your money. What are you going to give me? Well, with Kickstarter and Indigo, I'm going to give you a product. But now I've got an ICO. What is an ICO? Well, I'm going to give you a token. What's that, you might ask? Well, that's a, 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 digital, a digital fingerly bob that you can use to exchange for other cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Ethereum or something like that. Huh? What does that, why would I put money into that? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know why, but this is big money. And an ICO is an initial coin offering where I present this proposal to the world wide web around the world. You give me the money and I will give you a token for the money you invest with me. And initially, it starts off as a utility token. What does that mean? Well, it's a medium of exchange. So if I give you this token, you will be able to exchange it for some Bitcoin or Ethereum or some other cryptocurrency. But a lot of these ICOs turned out to be security tokens. That is, they become under the definition of a security and the SEC in the US didn't like that and they started shutting them down. Wow! Because they kept on, they started to say, hey, this ICO, the, you're giving your holders ownership rights to a company that's similar to an IPO. So if it's similar to an IPO, then there are four conditions that, you know, you're taking people's money and they expect profit and it's an investment with a, the enterprise. You know, there's an equity, a share, and the profits come from the efforts, your efforts of the recipient of the money. Wow. And so then the SEC considers that as security and then it's subject to security laws. What you need to know is that, okay, while the SEC is you know, putting a ring fence around the definition of what is a security token of an ICO, well, the ICO business just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Wow, look at that, you know, 2017, the top ICOs by category alone in 2017, both of them, Tezos and EIS, were cryptocurrencies. Wow. The big thing you need to take away from this space without getting into too much complexity is that these ICOs are a backdoor way of getting money rather than going to the stock market or rather than going to venture capital to beg for money. Like you go to a venture capital, you have to have a business pitch. You have to have your plan. How are you going to make money? What is your business model? Why should the VC give you money? Well, if you can get the money easily by issuing a, a token, then why don't you do that? Yeah, and startups around the world are doing that. Ripping some people off because there's a lot of cowboys out there and regulators around the world are getting more wise about, you know, is there an ICO allowed or not allowed? And it's still 
a grey area about whether an ICO is properly regulated or not. It's still being worked out, okay? And in this fintech unit, we won't be able to tell you everything about that, but just understand that ICOs are a, a channel for businesses to raise money separate from IPOs and separate from VC money. That's what you need to know. Just an example of the funds raised by ICOs. They are even greater than angel and VC funding up to 2017 and even beyond 2017. So there you have it, capital raising. Traditionally, it was the IPO, then venture capital, including angel investors, things like that. But in the last five years, it's the ICO. Yeah, I, I love the ICO. Just put something on the internet and the money just comes in. And what do you get in give in return? You give out tokens. And what is a token? It's like a digital artifact. It could be nothing. Yeah, like crazy, isn't it? But that's the world we're in at the moment. So just be aware of that when we're talking about capital raising. The real capital raising ranges from you know, crowdfunding to ICO. And these are the two big growth areas in the last 10 years. So keep that in mind. That finishes part two of the World Economic Forum FinTech Framework where we looked at investment management and capital raising. So watch out for that. Investment management, a robo-advisor is coming to you soon. And on crowdfunding, yes, there's going to be an offer coming to your mobile phone soon to take money from you. So watch out for it in case it's a dodgy one. This is Neil, part two of the introduction to the World Economic Forum Framework. Stay tuned for part three, where we're going to look at payments and market provisioning. Oh, this is going to be exciting because payments is a big area. Catch you soon. See you in part three. Bye for now.